It's the National Football League on EA Sports. Up next, we'll see Russell Wilson. After his last game, now across 3,000 yards for the season. It's the Broncos and the Cards, and it's coming right up on EA Sports. Whiteout conditions throughout the Great Plains. Sure, they travel difficult, but we're still expecting a full house in Empower Field at Mile High here in Denver. Today, we reach Week 15, and we've got a good matchup in store between the Arizona Cardinals and the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And, C.D., you look at the Cardinals in this matchup, and this is going to be a heck of a chess match. This offense against the defense that will take no prisoners out there. It's going to be a big-time battle, and I think that both of these teams have that mindset of, we're going to do what we do and make the other guys react to us. And we've definitely got a couple of headstrong coordinators who won't back down from a challenge. So this will be a battle of wits as much as it'll be a battle of brawn. surprise here in Denver. That'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Well, here comes Kyler Murray in his fourth NFL season leading his Cardinal offense. Already a two-time Pro Bowler in his time with Arizona. And no excitement unless, you, unless you're on the defensive team of last week in his numbers because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown pass. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? And they are not going to let him turn the corner. Some serious pressure right out of the gate. So a nightmare start to the drive as they're already staring at second and long. Now the pass, and it's into the arms of Hopkins. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. Throwing on first down is Murray. And his throw is incomplete. The Cardinals at 3-10 and 10 now on the year. Yeah, they've lost three straight here. And it kind of goes without saying, I guess, but they could certainly use a win. Yeah, no doubt about that. There's a difference between a losing stretch and a losing streak. And right now, they're not playing their best football, but if they were to fall here, and now you're looking at going four games without a win, things can start compounding themselves pretty quickly from this point forward. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 29-yard line. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. That's complete once again to Hopkins. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They fake the handoff. Now Murray. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Play fake. Murray. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. I got the challenge we're seeing here in this game early. Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. From the six. Here's Russell Wilson, 11th season in the league. First, of course, with Denver. 
after a high-profile trade this offseason that saw him dealt from Seattle. And he's had a great season so far throwing the football. Very likely could go for 4,000 yards with a good performance here. And even in an age of passing first, that is no small accomplishment. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 23. To throw is Wilson. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. On third down, Wilson. Now he steps away. And they work this well on field across the 45. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. They'll run it for the first time with Williams. Well, I'm not quite sure how he got away from that first tackler, but he won't even be able to get it back to the line of scrimmage there as the defense rallies behind him. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Here's Wilson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. A reminder that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll check in with Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half of play. On third down, here's Williams. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. Creeping up on 1,000, could get there on this drive. So a challenge for him to do that, but also defensively, maybe a challenge for them to not allow that. And that means probably kicking even more coverages to his side. And what that really means is wherever he lines up, he will have a cornerback over in his area. Now instead of blitzing your linebacker, dropping him into coverage, instead of the safety dropping into regular coverage, that safety moves into that area to try and discourage the quarterback from going to him. That means everyone else, when you're wrapped, you've got an opportunity to catch passes now, too. A little bit of a cat and mouse game. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Throwing again, Murray. And incomplete on the deep ball. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, Defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try and pass downfield that fell incomplete. On the move to his left, and now he'll let this one go deep, back over the middle, and that nearly intercepted. Well, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The final four weeks of the NFL season are upon us, and we got some intriguing matchups in prime time tonight. Patriots and Raiders, that's in Vegas. Josh McDaniels taking on his former employer there. And then Monday Night Football, 
the Rams and Packers from what should be a frosty Lambeau field at 8.15 Eastern time, 7.15 locally there in Green Bay. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. From the 25 on second down, Wilson. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Off the draw, here's Williams. And yeah, they will bottle him up behind the line, and now will they use a timeout? A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. So we've hit halftime just a few. All right, we'll bypass the halftime show in favor of returning to this late season game with the teams coming back from the locker rooms here a bit early. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Rocky Mountain snow looks like it's going to continue through this second half as we are back underway in Denver. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as he'll have it first to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Wilson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Now here comes Dorch on the return. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. yardage here back at the 23 yard line tough spot looking at second and 16 here after the big loss and he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple third down now those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points and he'll be taken down but not before they work it across midfield and this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game, second and ten. Now we give up the middle to Williams. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still ten to go on third down. Play action. Now it's Murray. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 28. Now Murray off play action. This will be caught downfield by Moore. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Now a timeout called for by the offense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Welcome back now to Denver. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams. 
as we get set for the fourth quarter. Six yards puts him right on the doorstep, but now it'll be fourth and goal. Here we go with Williams. And this time he is in. Yes. Darrell Williams, his first touchdown on the year. And the Cardinals are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. Well, we lasted all the way to the fourth quarter without a touchdown being on the board, but here a key one to extend the lead. Definitely, and I really doubt, though, <laughs> that that's going to open the floodgates. What do you think, Parker? No, not the way that we've seen these defenses play. Yeah, no doubt about it. They've been rock solid, but we had to know that sooner or later, someone had to surrender a touchdown, and it happened right there. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good, and the lead grows to 10-0. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we we're talking about the NFL. A team can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right. Keeping hope alive. Throwing again on second and ten. Wilson. He's got his 6-5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. This is Hamler on the receiving end. And he'll get this forward only for about a yard as that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. To throw again is Wilson. Looking sideline incomplete. Now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Now Wilson. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 43. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. Here's Wilson. And that's incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Cardinal defense is going to get the football back. Ready to go with their next drive. And at the line, the Cardinal offense. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Second and long, but you got to figure this almost certainly another run. They'll try and run down some clock with Wood. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And they take over already five yards deep into the red zone at the 15-yard line. Whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score quickly here on first down. Throwing now is Wilson. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. Wilson to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Now Wilson. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. 
Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. On the other side, get that hand steam ready. No doubt about it. So with just under 40 seconds, you figure this is going to need the best play if they have any shot. And this is going to be recovered by the hand steam. And that should just about put a camera on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal just tells well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical and this is caught and that could seal it it's a touchdown and that touchdown charles with very little time remaining boy it just sucked any energy and momentum out of the other sideline yeah take an incredible comeback in the final minute to bring this one back to even a great series there offensively they saw an opportunity to slam the window shut and they followed through and he will get into the end zone so the lead stretches from nine up to eleven After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So Russell Wilson in the offense. Down by 11, 27 seconds to go. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, they've certainly had trouble blocking this defense through three and a half quarters, so I don't expect it to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything, and they force an incompletion there. And this is caught on the sideline on the feet in. They are. What a catch. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Now it's Wilson. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. All smiles and high fives on that defensive sideline. That interception will cap off what was truly a tremendous performance. Yeah, if you can hold a team to seven points in the NFL, that's the kind of day that you feel really good about. And I do know a few guys are going to think to themselves, dashing through the snow, the 20. And he takes it in for the score on the game's final play. So it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. Or as our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little land, yeah, a little extra on top. And this win now going to look a little more lopsided on the scoreboard, CD. Now, some may have run out the clock in that scenario, but they wanted to put their foot on the gas, get one more touchdown, and they did just that. Well, partner, I would say the traditionalists not overly excited about that score. They'd like to see the game played a little bit differently. But what you can't argue with is their execution of that play because it played out exactly as it was drawn up. It almost would have been a shame not to finish with such a well-run play. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So for the Cardinals, it's a fourth win of the campaign as they get to 4-10 and ten on the year. And they will head home next week to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, they drop their 10th game now to fall to 4-10. and ten. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to L.A. to take on the Rams.